Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and it looks like we've got a, a problem involving graphing lines. Let's take a look. It says find the slope and the y-intercept of the equation of the line below and use them to graph the line. So first of all, they want us to figure out the slope, figure out the y-intercept, and then once we're done with that, graph the line. You know, sounds like something challenging and like it's really hard, but actually as a ma mathematician, I know it's easy. And the reason why it's easy is because of this, the equation of the line. This is called an equation of a line, y equals yada, yada, yada in this case, <laughs> some number of x's, basically. And I love when the equation of the line is in this form. What form am I talking about? This form is what's known as the slope-intercept form. Now, good news, you don't have to have slope-intercept form um, memorized for your GED because it is on the formula sheet. If you looked up, um, it's on the bottom part of your formula sheet. If you looked up slope-intercept equation of a line, it tells you that is y equals mx plus b. So you don't have to have this memorized, but you do need to know how to read this and what it means. So basically what it means is that if the y is alone, if the equation of a line is solved for y, the y is alone, then whatever number is multiplying with x is the m, the slope. We use the letter m to signify slope. And whatever number is adding or subtracting is the b. We use the letter b to signify the y-intercept. And so what I noticed and why I cheered is that my line is already in slope-intercept form. Look at this, the y is alone. There's my mx, my number, that m that's multiplying with the x, and there's my b adding on uh, to the back side there. I can see my slope, my slope is 1 half. That's the number multiplying with x. And I can see my y-intercept. My y-intercept is 2. So two of the three things they asked me to do are done. They asked me to find the slope and the y-intercept. There they are. Now that being said, we can also use these two things to graph a line. Now my um, advice to you though is start with the y-intercept. The y-intercept is a point on the graph. And it is a really special point. It is the point where my line crosses the y-axis. That's that vertical axis, the one that runs up and down. So um, my line is going to cross the y-intercept at 2. So I'm going to come to 2 on the y-axis and put a little dot there. That's where my line is going to cross. And that's why I want to start with the y-intercept, because it's an actual point. It's the special point where my line crosses the y-axis. So let me just write that down. It's on the y-axis. Okay, that being said, now the slope is not a point, guys. The slope is a movement. It tells you how to move away from the point you just made. So there I am at that y-intercept that I just made, and I am going to move. And many of you have heard the slope known as the rise over run. A lot of teachers call it the rise over run because that's exactly what it tells you. It tells you how much to go up and how much to go over. So starting at this y-intercept I just graphed, I am going to rise one. I'm going to go up one. And then I'm going to run two. I'm going to go over two. And um, that's a positive two, so I ran to the right. Um, uh, running careful running left going left would make uh, it be negative two all right and now I'm going to drop another point there so now the arrows I drew I just drew so you guys could hey what's wrong with my pen let me try that again the arrows I just drew I drew so you guys could visualize the movement but basically what I end up with is two points. The point I drew on the y-axis and the point that I drew after doing the movement of the slope and now all I have to do is connect those points. All it takes is two points to make a line and I have graphed this line. So again, I put down that y-intercept on the y-axis, I moved, I rose one and ran two, dropped another point, connected them and boom, I got the line. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.